But I'm delighted to say that joining us now via Zoom is Keith Fraser, who is the host of a fantastic podcast, the Rock and Roll Tennis Podcast, alongside former British number one and Davis Cup captain John Lloyd. If you haven't heard it, it it's entertaining, it's relaxed, it's varied. They don't just talk about tennis. Unfortunately for Keith, he's an Arsenal fan, so occasionally Ooh. he has to talk about just how bad they are these days. And he's also written a book called Cojones, Growing a Pair for Success. Keith, good morning. Well, good morning to you. Uh, you know what? This is such a pleasure for me, Marcus. Uh, and, and, you know, you must think I'm constantly busting you up, but I genuinely love this show. I love Radio Wimbledon. Every year, as soon as I know it's on, when I wake up in the morning, bang, goes on when I'm having a shower, it's Radio Wimbledon. No more LBC. Unfortunately, from tomorrow, I've got to get back to the pol boring old politics. <laughs> but, yeah, thank you for having me. Well, it's an absolute pleasure. And I have to say, I mean, the book which I have read is brilliant. And I think there's a real link here today because the big question has to be, does Matteo Berrettini have the cojones to go out in his first Grand Slam final and beat the world number one, Novak Djokovic? And if you were in his camp now, Keith, what advice in particular, which of your cojones 10 commandments would you be stressing to the Italian? Well, you know, it's interesting because um, one of the things you will see, Marcus, is about thought, this notion of thought. If we go out and focus on the process of what got us into that place in the first place, we can play with the greater freedom. I think if Berrettini goes out and doesn't think too much about the size of the job, the man opposite the court and plays his game, he will have the better chance. You see, if you, I noticed when he played Djokovic in the French Open recently, he gave Djokovic probably the hardest match of the whole tournament, bar Na Rafa Nadal and all right, man, man, uh, Stefano Tsitsipas, but he gave him a very hard match. But in the crucial points, he came out wanting, he made errors. And I think he, he's, he, he, that has to change. And I think sometimes the size of the job, we think about it too much. I would say to him, just play your game, and focus on um, what got you there, not on what, what will happen at the end or who's on the other side of the court. That's what I would say. Yeah. And in more general terms, I mean, you are the pioneer of, of this wonderful term, cojones, and it's described in the book as a cheeky yet profound code for living successfully and authentically. What persuaded you to write the book in the first place? And, and can you give us just a gist of what we all need to do a little more to be as successful as possible in our lives? Well, look, you know, I cannot profess to be this perf perfection, this utopian uh, ideal of a person. But at the end of the day, we, when, we, when, when, when we're born and when we grow up as kids, people say, what do you want to be when you're older? And, and we all talk, say a footballer, although you support Tottenham, so maybe it wasn't a footballer for you. That's <laughs> it, no, that's it, it Keith, you're going. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, we all have these dreams and ideals. And, 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 and when we grow up, we realise that parental messages, societal messages, they all dampen what we can and can't do. And I think many people are frustrated. Many people are frustrated with life, as you can see on the streets with all the, all the shenanigans that go on with all the, all the, the vandalism and the demonstrations. If people will, could take their own lives and be in control of their own selves, be more personally accountable, we will have a greater opportunity to be happier because we will live more authentically. And I think that I know from my own self that I very much bound by the messages I've had growing up, some positive and many negative as well. But I do think that if we can live by this notion of doing what we want to do, saying what we want to say, which is not easy in, this, in, 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 in today's um, uh, life, as we know, uh, and, and just just doing what we want to do, being what we want to say, and effectively being utterly authentic and unapologetic, individually we'll be happier. And I think on a micro level that means, and then if if everybody is a little bit happy, happier, collectively we'll be happier. But if, if, if you follow that policy through, you're going to end up offending and insulting a lot of people, particularly in today's environment, aren't you? Well, I, I don't think so, because and I think one of the biggest problems is that we're too easily offended. I mean, whatever happened when I was growing up, my mum used to say to me, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I know words can hurt you, but at the end of the day, we cannot spend our lives blaming something external 
on how our lives are affected. The most important way to run our lives is to be personally accountable and to be confident in ourselves. Anything else external really should have no bearing. Of course, I'm not saying go out and offend. Absolutely not. But we can use softeners. We can be diplomatic in the way we say things as long as we are honest to ourselves and honest to others. And I think people respect that. Well, the book has been published by Panorama Press and Alistair Campbell, who, of course, is the former spokesman and strategist to ex-UK Prime Minister Tony Blair, has called it a fascinating analysis of a vital subject. So go out and get hold of a copy if you can. Of course, with another hat on, you present the Rock and Roll Tennis podcast with John Lloyd, the former British number one. I saw him a couple of days ago, and, mm. and he was saying to me that you, because he knows Donald Trump quite well, and you have been putting a bit of pressure on John to get him on the podcast. Is that going to happen? You know what, Marcus? I'm a strong believer in anything's possible. I absolutely want to get that man on. Listen, it doesn't mean I have to like him for all the things that he says or does. I respect he has a certain amount of self-confidence, and I respect that. Um, and he loves tennis, like we all do. And that's what brings us together. And that's what the whole notion about sport should be. The Olympic ideal is about bringing the world together. And if we can talk about things, something that we love, and let's face it, tennis is the greatest sport there is out there. I love all sports, as you know. I love my club, Arsenal. I hope England win the, the European Championships today. But sport brings us together, and tennis is the greatest sport the more. And yes, I absolutely want Donald Trump to get on the, on, on the podcast. And why not, Marcus? Why not? Well, we've had I... you on, and it's the next, it's the next <laughs> natural step, isn't it? Well, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure I want to be connected too closely in that regard with Donald Trump, <laughs> but I know you'll keep pushing John until he does, and um, yeah, he says he'll do his absolute best to, to get him on that podcast sooner rather than later. A couple of final quick questions for you. First of all, Berrettini Djokovic today. Of course, just about everybody expects Djokovic to win. What's your prediction? It's interesting, Marcus, because... I, in fact, John said to me, well, I think Berrettini's got a chance. He said that a few weeks ago. I said, but is he, is he able to convert on the most important points? Now, he's in the final. He won Queens. He's a threat. He has the tools to damage Djokovic. He's got an enormous serve, big forehand. And I think that this is not going to be as easy as people think. I think it's going to go to four or five. Anything can happen. Of course... You wouldn't want to bet against Djokovic, but I think it's going to be a lot closer than people imagine. And if if Berrettini does, takes a little bit of advice from me, just focuses on the point, don't think about the importance, I think he's got a chance. But again, can you lose to a wall? Not really. But can you break through a wall by just bulldozing it? Yes, you can. You can knock the wall over. And if anyone can knock the wall over, I think it's probably Berrettini. And finally, are Arsenal ever going to have a decent team again? <laughs> well, look, Marcus, you know, it's very interesting you say that because, of course, people in glass houses should never throw stones, as it were. <laughs> look, um, I know, I, I, you know, I have always said to you uh, that you are a very pragmatic Spurs fan, which is interesting. My brother supports Chelsea, and the one thing we have in common is the fact that we can mock Tottenham. But I think Arsenal are going to have a good season next season. They signed a player yesterday. You hear that they're into, they're going to be looking at making other purchases. I think the future is bright. They've got an inexperienced manager, but I just think that maybe we should let him grow on the job. And look, we can't get much worse. Yes, is the answer. I think <laughs> next season we're going to have a good season. Dream on, Keith. But thank you very much indeed for joining us. And uh, thank enjoy, you. enjoy the final this afternoon. That is Keith Fraser, the author of Cojones, Grow a Pair for Success. And he's also an Arsenal fan.